Hi, I'm Robert Story. I'm a technical writer on the Microsoft Online Services User Assistance Team, and today I'm going to give you a quick tour of the sign-in application. The sign-in application provides an easy single sign-in point for Microsoft Online Services. Let's launch it now. I'll double-click the sign-in icon on the desktop, and it's signing me in. There. After you're signed in, the sign-in application lists the services you can use. The services you see here are part of a subscription offering called Business Productivity Online Standard Suite. By clicking any of these buttons, you launch the application. For email and calendaring, we have Outlook 2007. For web conferencing, we have Live Meeting. For instant messaging, we have Office Communicator 2007 R2. And for My Company Portal, we have a SharePoint online site designed for information workers. On My Company Portal, you can access your service applications, you can access other SharePoint sites that you've created, and you can download other software that you need to operate Microsoft Online Services. Notice that the Email button has a down arrow. This indicates that another email feature is available too. When you click the arrow, you see that Outlook Web Access is the other feature. Now let's click the Options tab. In the Options tab, as you'd expect, lists the options available for the sign-in application. Automatically Start When Windows Starts is selected by default. and I previously selected these other options to make it easy to sign in. The Options tab is also where you can change your password for Microsoft Online Services. I'll click the link now so you can see the UI. This is where you'd go to change your password. Uh, in advanced options, you can opt to receive a notice when updated versions of the sign-in application are available or when new configurations of service applications become available. These configurations refer to the fact that your desktop applications must be configured to work with Microsoft Online Services. The sign-in application automatically configures the applications for you, but this auto uh, configuration only occurs when you sign in. If you've remained signed in for a long time and haven't had a new sign-in session, you might have missed a new configuration. That's why we have this Check for New Configurations Now link. Let's try it and see what happens. We look down in the notification area and we see that no new configurations are available at this time. Please check back later. So that's good. We haven't missed anything. Don't worry about not selecting these options because even if you don't select them, if a mandatory update of the sign-in application comes out, or if new configurations become mandatory, you'll still receive notice and you'll be asked to upgrade at the appropriate time. You can also select the Enable Data Logging checkbox, which means that the sign-in application will begin keeping a record of sign-in events. That way, if you have a problem with sign-in and you need to contact support for help, you'll have activity logs that support can look at. And notice this last link, Reconfigure My Desktop Applications. Clicking this link will automatically reconfigure the desktop, desktop applications that run with Microsoft Online Services. These are the ones you saw on the Home tab. You can reconfigure your applications if you notice buggy behavior in any of them. Running through them through the configuration process again may eliminate any kinks that have crept in. Now let's go back to sign-in preferences for a minute. I want to look at this Minimize option here. The Minimize option will automatically minimize the sign-in application whenever you're signed in. This can be useful if you usually have a lot of windows open and you want to reduce the clutter by not having the sign-in application window open too. So let's see how it works. You select the checkbox and the Apply button begins blinking to remind you that you have to apply the change. If you don't click Apply, your selection won't be acted on. So let's click it and we get the notice that the change has taken effect. Uh, in this case, since I already have the sign-in application open, sign-in assumes that I want to keep it open. But let's sign out and then sign back in again and see what happens. Signing in. And, ah, this time, upon signing in, the application automatically minimizes itself to the notification area. If you right-click the sign-in icon, You'll see a list of almost everything you can do with the sign-in application open, all the different options, including the different applications you can launch directly from here. There's one feature the minimized version doesn't list, and I want to show it to you, so let's open it again. We open and go back to options. I'm going to uncheck the minimize 
option so it doesn't get in our way later. And now look at the top of the window. At the top of each sign-in window is a language selection tool. You can use this tool to change the language of the sign-in application. There are 15 options among five major languages. You can see them right here. I'm going to go down to the bottom of the list and choose Spanish. So I click Spanish. I get a confirmation message which explains that I have to sign out and then sign back in again to see the change. So I click OK. It automatically signs me out and automatically signs me back in again and you can see already the UI is appearing in Spanish. Now I'm completely signed in and again just to look through the tabs you can see that everything appears in Spanish. Let's switch back to US English again now and I'll continue the tour. And we're almost back in English. Here we are. I'm going to go to the About tab now. The About tab provides version information about the sign-in application. It also has links for license terms, privacy statement, service agreement, and code of conduct. You see these when you first install the sign-in application, and they also appear in the sign-in window each time you sign in, but uh, you can always return to the About tab to access them if necessary. And finally, last word, don't forget the sign-in help. If you have any questions about using the sign-in application or the applications you can access through the sign-in application, just click the Help button. There we are. Well, thanks for taking the tour. For more detailed information about the sign-in application and about Microsoft Online Services, click one of the following links. And I'll see you in another podcast. Thanks.